All right. So what you see in the vise is uh, the first part of this two-part uh, series. And I'm going to start to move a little bit quickly um, because I'm having a hard time uploading videos that go over about 28 minutes. I'm going to try to get this down to about 30. Um, I've already shot this video once and it wound up at 102, uh, I'm sorry, one, one, <laughs> one hour, uh, two minutes. So, uh, so what's in the vise is the, what we're going to get to at the first part of this video. Uh, and this is just the outline of this fly. Uh, there's a whole grooming part to this, uh, which we'll get to in the next video. So let's just kind of get cracking. So that's what we're, that's what we're looking to get to here. The hook that I'm putting in the vise is a Eagle Claw 570 uh, size 6. You can tie these on 4s or uh, you can probably tie them on 8s. Uh, you'll have to make some adjustments. I know this looks a little out of focus but that's the way the fly is going to build and you'll get the whole fly in the picture. Um, so a couple of things that um, you're going to need tools wise is you're going to need a hefty pair of wire cutters. We're going to use those up front real quick. You're going to need a bodkin toothbrush comes in real handy. This is just a medium toothbrush. A uh, good pair of scissors. Uh, dubbing twister, uh, which I'm going to use, it will work the best, although you can. I'll try to quickly show how you can twist it up by hand using just a pair of uh, uh, hackle pliers. So the first thing we've got to do, uh, well, let me tell you what. I'll just show you here. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the thread that I'm using. I'm just using 140 uh, denier. Whoop, sorry. Uh, Danville uh, pre-waxed uh, olive and we'll just get this guy started and while you guys are tying uh, I'll keep talking so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a thread base down from the 90 degree, be uh, 90 degree bend uh, to the hook point and then what, I've, what I'm going to use next is uh, some wire nails. It's an 18 gauge size wire nail. It's one inch long. The reason I went with one inch long is because I only have to cut off the tip. So this is what the nail looks like from end to end. It's a little flat part there. And so uh, to balance this fly, which this fly needs to be balanced, all we're going to do is we're going to take our wire cutters and just cut off just the actual tip. I recommend putting the part that you're cutting and gonna, it's going to fire it's going to shoot out uh, away from you and put it inside that cone. Aim it down into something like a trash can. Uh, we also need a 3 16 size tungsten bead. I'm using uh, black nickel. You could use uh, gold if you wanted. And so I've already got a uh, nail cut here. And what I want to do is I want to take the you can see that the the larger end of the bead that you'd normally put in the the opposite side and we're going to place that in so that the flat edge of the nail slides right up to the bead and it sits inside the bead like this. Now the reason I said cut it off right to that degree and you need to watch out for these little sharp points coming off that nail is we're going to line this up right with the hook point. And what that allows us to do is tie this fly without me having to explain the balancing part of it because uh, I, I tried to do that in the first one and it just got it, it just ran too long. So we're going to tie that on going forward. So when you as you're bringing your thread back, what you want to do is you want to jump your thread over and around so you don't snap your thread. And we're going to bring this to the barb or just before the bend. Next, what you need is a piece of marabou. Uh, this is like a sand color or a tan color. Uh, either either one will really work here. And all we want to do is grab the tips of the marabou. So we have all this fluffy stuff off the side. We're going to use this whole feather. We're going to use the whole thing. And we just want to kind of get it in our fingers so that we can length it out to the distance of the entire fly. I'm going to place this right on top. I'm going to place a couple of wraps over, keeping the marabou on top. And the reason I keep that marabou on top, it's kind of a pain in the butt at first, is so that when we wrap this marabou in going forward along the nail and the shank, uh, this marabou is going to cover up 
that sharp point on the nail and uh, it'll help you um, as long as you do it right it'll help keep you from uh, or help you keep from breaking your thread okay so we just want to line this out as a tail and if it if it doesn't sit quite perfect it's okay it's gonna get groomed later okay so we just want it still sitting kind of on top something like that now I'm just gonna kind of leap my thread forward up onto that nail portion of the shank spiral wrap this guy forward to behind the eye bring my scissors in we're just gonna trim all that out and we're gonna just set that aside we're gonna need it here again in a little bit now I'm just kinda start working back and forth a little bit just kinda cleaning that up just a fuzz tie it in and I'm gonna bring my thread back to the back there we go So I'm going to bring it back to the back right where the nail meets up. Next, what we want to do is we want to get a piece of pearl crystal flash. Uh, and this is a full length strand. And uh, one full length strand can make, uh, if, you, I mean, if, you were, if you went precise with it, right where you want it on both sides, you might get three out of it. Uh, but uh, one strand will definitely make two flies. So we're going to tie the far side in first. And we want that in line with the shank. So I'm going to put a little tension. I'm going to hold the bobbin so that I don't roll the material, uh, the tied-in material on the far side. I'm going to roll the other part of the pearl flash over and just place two turns in. It's going to be kind of angled down at this point. I, now you can lift it up and get it to mimic the opposite side. You may have to release a little tension when you do this. And just place a couple more wraps in. And while I'm holding it, I'm just going to kind of eyeball where it is. And now we have our flash in. I'm going to bring it back up to where the nail starts again. I'm going to make about a six inch dubbing loop, a uh, five inch dubbing loop, something like that. I'm going to wrap this to the back, right to the tail. Put that in a clip, get it out of the way. Next, what I need to bring in, uh, and I've already measured the size on this, this is uh, uh, rayon chenille. And a five inch piece is sufficient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up on top, right to the back, and this is gonna help, and you may not get it like quite perfect, so you may have to go back and forth just a little bit. It's gonna help fill in this gap and even a little bit more. Now I'm gonna bring this thread forward and all the way forward to about a half bodkin width behind the eye. And now I can start to wrap this chenille or polymer going forward. And we're going to take this all the way up to the thread. Now, the better you get at this, uh, you should have just like a little slight taper right there, which is which is fine. And when we jump to the front side of the thread, it's going to shrink significantly because we don't have the extra body there or the e extra underbody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to the front side of my thread like so. Take one more wrap around my thread on the front side lift straight up pull down slip my thread over the top now i've got it on that side and so to kind of help mimic the back side i'm just going to lay it flat across the bottom of the shank and we're going to wrap back to the back side of the 90 degree hook eye and trim just this little piece out okay so next what i'm using is what's known as starburst fibers it's from Fly Tires Dungeon in the color of orange. And these are basically, it's kind of like a crystal flash. Uh, it's, or I'm sorry, not a crystal flash, but like an ice dub. I'm sorry. Uh, so, but they're really long fibers and we don't need, we, we, we don't need a whole lot. Uh, we just, this is going to kind of become part of the body. You can kind of see, um, I didn't break all the measurements down for you like I have on some of the other videos, but uh, uh, we don't need a whole lot. Um, and we're going to work this into our dubbing loop. We want the dubbing loop. We want the uh, uh, we want that material to go about two and a half to three inches 
down the um, dubbing loop. So I've got my spinner already placed in there. And then all we're going to do is just kind of slide this in there about 50 50 it doesn't have to be perfect we're just we're creating a just a general underbody here this is not anything fancy or flashy so if you've got to this point and you don't have a dubbing spinner what you can do is you can take your pliers so we move out to the side so you can see a little bit you can clip right onto it and just start to twist it by hand uh, it actually will twist better if you come straight on with the dubbing spinner Sorry, I, I just can't do it with the camera in front of me, but if you come straight on with the thread like this and have the thread sticking right out of the top as opposed to the side like I just showed you, uh, it twists a little better. So for expedience sake, I'm just going to twist this up. And we don't need to get crazy here. I'm going to do a couple. And by doing just a couple, I can still adjust <coughs> just by pinching and pulling a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can adjust my loop to uh, where I need, or the material in the loop to where I need it. I'm just going to kind of take my toothbrush and just work this a little bit so that some of it's plucked out. We don't need it to be super flowy or anything like that. Just a little. So if you're using a dubbing spinner at this point, clip on down on the thread, cut the dubbing spinner out, and. As we start to wrap this, you're just going to start to draw the material in one direction. And uh, usually on the first turn or two here, I'll just kind of open spiral wrap this uh, loop forward. And uh, if a little white shows through, it's really not going to be a, a big deal whatsoever. And so but as we get close here, we're going to start to tighten everything up. Let's place our final wraps right behind the 90. Jump this in front of my thread. Cross over. And we're going to, end, we, what, however you want to tie this off, you just want to make sure that you're tying it off so that your thread's on the back of the eye. We can trim this out. And we're going to give it a little toothbrush here. Like so. Just a kind of help things in the grooming process along. You can take your uh, bodkin and kind of pick it out too if you need to, something like this or whatever. Uh, but it's something generally looking like this is perfect. So if you've been following along with the uh, classes, what we're going to need to do is get some black marabou. I had mentioned in the last video that uh, since we were using the tips of the black marabou for the tail of the leech, uh, to save this part, uh, and here's why, because now we're going to take, uh, we're just going to strip off a little bit of this marabou. It's in black, and we're just going to invert the fly, and we're going to tie this on, and what I'll do is I'll, s I'll grab it and I'll split right down the middle as, or as close as I can over that hook eye, like so. And uh, you just got to be careful. You need to draw it back, and you want to you try to get it as even as possible right now. Uh, it'll make it easier than trying to do it during the grooming. And we're going to place one wrap, or maybe two. I can't do it with that turned. I was going to try to show you right where to place it, but... So you're just going to pinch down. You're going to take a wrap. None of it wants to work with me. We're going to place it right over on the front side of the thread. I'll put two in just because it wants to kind of get wonky. And you can take your bodkin and start to draw it to the back and see how much falls on either side. You, you need to make the adjustment of where uh, you want this to lay because you want it to kind of lay something like this. When you, when you can pinch it, it's going to collapse together in the end. But uh, right now you want it to kind of do something like this. Now we're just going to pull these tips forward, and now we're going to jump our thread to the front side and place about two or three wraps in. And we're going to trim those little tags out, and you can just tie those off and just come back. So you should have something about like this. 
roughly. Okay, so now we're going to come back to our tan marabou, and here's the part where you need to pay attention a little bit because we're going to have to wrap this stem. Some of these marabou stems get awfully thick towards the base, and we're, it's, that's going to be okay on this particular fly. Uh, and I'll show you a way where we can take it and pinch it with our nails when we get there and kind of flatten it out a little bit. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tie this, we're going to tie this tip in that we cut, and we're going to wrap it. So when you, when you're holding this up and you've determined which way you're going to fold this marabou over, you need to figure out which side is going to be drawn naturally to the back of the fly. Okay. Once you've figured that out, so in this case, I'm holding it straight up like this. I'm going to tie it in very similar, and it's going to be to my left side, or over here. Now, once I have this, I want to just carefully, and I try to do this all in one swoop, pull all of this off the side. Now, again, I'm going to take the bigger part of the feather and set it aside so that I have just this pile of marabou. Okay, now what we want to do is basically we're going to split this in half. And uh, it doesn't need to be lined up or anything like that. But what we're going to do is start to create the belly of the fly. So now that we have all this loose fiber, I'm going to place it right on top. I want to have it draw back into the tail or roughly to the tail. And I'm going to place a couple of turns in, just loose turns. Now I can situate it and have it kind of be distributed along the belly of the fly. Kind of clamp down on this a few more times. Now we're going to trim this out. So you have something like that. Okay, now we're going to go back to our big feather. And I'm going to tie this in so that all of this marabou is angled toward the back or and it makes it it just makes it a little easier to tie tie with so it's going to angle it like this place a couple of wraps in i'm going to take the tip of this cut marabou fold it over place two or three more wraps in you can kind of get difficult because all this stuff wants to kind of flow in your way and I'm going to draw everything out of the way. I'm going to sneak in here and trim off the majority of that. You don't have to get it all. You want to get a majority of it. So next what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of stroke all this out a little bit. And we're going to start to palmer this thing forward. You may need to move your thread forward a little bit. Because the stem, in a lot of cases, if it's a, if it's a thick stem, it's going to chew up some real estate really quick. And... You just want to kind of keep drawing it to the back as we go. And we're looking to get, oh, two and a half, three turns, something like that in here. And uh, the better you get at these, like, you know, they'll, they'll go at a decent clip. You know, you uh, for tying the actual fly, you might be able to get it down to, you know, 15, 20 minutes if you're hurrying. So as you start to come into this part and the stem starts to get thicker, you can take your fingernail just hold this so the stems facing up take your fingernail and start to rub that stem you got you have to put some pretty good pressure on it what it does is it starts to flatten out the stem uh, and I just kind of work it until I've got and I can't see it with all that marabou floating in the way until I know I've got a, a good solid turn in there see as it it's coming back around it's starting to do that again so once I have my two and a half three turns in we're gonna tie this off on the bottom in this position right here so what I'll do is I'll kind of just visually mark where that tie-in points gonna be and I, I'll kind of pinch now I, now I can sneak my fingers in there and pull that stem clear now I want to save this stuff that I just pulled off too Okay, now we're drawing everything to the back. Now we have a clear tie-off point. I know this is a little bit of a complicated technique. Uh, it works. 
uh, on something like this it works anyway I wouldn't be trying it on some crazy stuff but you want to get uh, you can see I'm kind of cross directionally wrapping this across across the stem I don't know if you can see that right there um, but you want to get a good four to six turns in there so that you can really hold that thing in place because it'll come unraveled and then what I'll do to lock it down is I'll fold that stem to the back I'll place a couple in front Nice and tight wraps too, nice and tight. Separate everything again, and I'm gonna come right back on top. And now this guy is good and locked in. Uh, I use fingernail clippers to clip these things out, uh, just cause they will dull scissors like nobody's business. So we should be about here at this point. And then you're like, wow, this just looks nuts. And yeah, it does. Uh, if you've got too much, um, of your tan or white color uh, up top. Don't be afraid to come in right behind the eye, separate some of that out and just trim it away. Uh, if you get short fibers, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but we, we want to have a, a, the presence of the black marabou coming off the back. Now, all that other material that we just took out off the tan marabou, we're gonna come in and help build that belly even more so if you've got some uh that didn't you know some marabou that didn't fully died uh which isn't you know which is it, it can be common in uh, depending on how it was dyed and you know there's just a lot of factors involved but um so we're going to take that we're going to lay it right on top so that the you can see this so that we're lining it up about like this maybe just past the bend we're going to set that on top we're going to Place, again, a couple of loose wraps in. Now you have the freedom to kind of situate everything where you want it. Don't be afraid to splay it around a little bit. Place a few tight turns in. And now we're gonna trim this out. And we will tie this down going forward. And you can do this going forward part pretty quickly. All right, so to add some color into the sides of the body to help give it that golden shiner um, kind of feel. Uh, what I have here is a Brahma hen. Uh, getting the long fibers on a Brahma hen is pretty hard. We don't need them to be super long, even the short ones tying it in where we're tying it in. They'll come back a, you know, a little ways uh, and that's, that's plenty, that's fine. So to prep the feather, we're gonna take off all the down and all the fluff. Uh, just hold it tip side. I'm right-handed, right thumb, right in, uh, right thumb, right index. I'm just going to pinch the tip right where I want to take everything off. And I'll strip the sides of the feather. And then you can discard that or uh, save it for a nymph or something. Next, I'm just going to pinch the tip, separate everything away. I'm going to tie this in kind of in a wet fly style so that my feather is angled uh, kind of in alignment with the bead. And I'm just going to place a few wraps over there. I'm going to fold the feather to the back, place some wraps directly on top. So now I've got this little piece sticking out the top there. I want to trim that out. Next, uh, if you're able, uh, don't don't pull the feather too hard because the stem is very it's pretty fragile, it'll snap. But it's also pretty easy to fold these hackles over. Uh, with not much of an issue. So we just want to fold them over, or what's called doubling. We want to double the hackle to the back. And we're going to palmer it that way, or wrap it that way going forward. Now, if the stem feather is a little twisted, it's not a big deal. All we have to do is place about a half turn in, place your finger on the side, pinch, let go of the stem. The stem will realign itself now you can pick the stem up once it's been realigned and continue to flow everything to the back. And you want to keep working it as you as you go. And I'll get to the side and just again, I'm going to pinch the feather to the side, let it go, let it flop, work it back. And then it's going to kind of collapse around the marabou and whatever. So now once we get to the bare stem, what I'll do is I'll just tie this off in a similar fashion 
uh, to what I did with the marabou stem. Um, even if it rolls forward all the way to behind the bead, uh, that's fine. I just place some wraps in and snap it off. Or if you have a thicker stem, again, uh, I would suggest using fingernail clippers. We're going to place just a little bit of a thread base there. So there's a little bit of a taper or cone right in this area. And I'm going to put in another dubbing loop. Almost there. And we're going to wrap this guy to the back. If you trap fibers here and there, uh, don't don't worry about it too much on this fly. Oops, sorry, my fingers are out in the way. I'm going to bring my thread forward. Uh, again, for expedience, uh, I'm just going to use my dubbing spinner. Prop that thing open. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to my uh, uh, starburst fi fibers. And for the final one, I'm looking for, this is probably a little heavy, uh, but I want, because these fibers are long, uh, something that's about the kind of the width of my finger. My fingers maybe, uh, I don't know, three quarter to half inch, something like that, half inch wide. Um, we're going to pull them apart, realign them like so. Because now we want the, now we kind of want the full length of the fiber, uh, which is going to shorten once we put it in the dubbing loop and twist it. Um, and then also at this point when I load it, uh, I still kind of want that two inch mark, uh, two and a half maybe, just something about like that so it runs about the length of the fly. Now I'm going to twist this up. Now I'm going to take my bodkin and gently just tease this stuff out. We don't want to over tease because it'll rip out or pull out, but after two spins, Get this out of here before I release it. But after two spins, we should have something about like that, and you can do it again. Uh, and anything that pulls directly out, just put it off to the side, and I'll show you how to fix any gaps that you may have uh, with the with the fibers. And sometimes you know you'll pull this stuff off, and uh, you know. There'll be, there'll be gaps in there, but we can use this stuff again in a second, so just set it in a pile. There we go. Still have my thread, old thread in my hackle pliers, so I'm going to just clip on with my hackle pliers. Trim this thing out. Now I'm going to start to work this thing forward, drawing all this material around and to the back of the fly. All the way up to right behind the bead. Uh, you just One thing you want to note is when you're doing this, you want to have a pretty thin noodle right here uh, when you tie this off. So the way I tie this off again is I'm going to come, I'm going to wrap it around to the front side of my thread, just pull down I just place another wrap over and that thing is actually anchored in pretty well. I'll put a couple of extra wraps in just to be on the safe side. Do that to the to the back side of the thread, not the front. And uh, with four wraps, that thing is actually pretty well anchored. Get your bodkin out. And gently, don't, don't dig into it. Just kind of run it along the side and see if you can free anything that may be trapped. Something like this, it kind of pops open and gets squirrely. Next, what we want to do is we want to take this toothbrush and uh, while we do that, stick ourselves with the hook point. That's pretty cool. Um, and we're going to run, whoop. It's going to kind of run this all around. It's difficult to do and you can't totally groom the fly, but what this is going to allow you to do is see if you have any potentially weak spots of your flash, maybe like here, like maybe it's a little, on the belly that's a little weak. So take anything that you've saved and left over. Uh, all you got to do is literally take a clump of it. We're going to stretch it out again a little bit. Um, we don't have to get crazy with it. I'm just going to go 50-50 right on top of the bead. Place a wrap and a half, two wraps over. Pull down. It's locked in. Don't pull too tight because we're going to glue this into place and not wrap it into place. And now you can spread this 
flash out or this uh, starburst material where it is. Now when you tie that off, pull everything back, a couple wraps in front. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same process again. Just lightly pick it open, draw it back with the toothbrush. So it, it's, uh, there's a lot of steps involved on this fly. It's not terribly difficult, um, but uh, it's, not, it's not easy either. So, okay, so once we have that, what I'll do is I'll take my bodkin and start to run everything down and around and away. Kind of like this, again, now that I've inverted it, I can take my toothbrush and just gently kind of work everything. Just want you want to just have a nice, nice covering. It, it, even a sparse covering is fine, just as long as it's even. That's kind of what we're shooting for here. Let's get that kind of going to the back. Okay, so now we're going to come back to our black marabou again, and I'm just going to take another little pinch of this here and slide it off to the side and we're going to do the same maneuver this time we're just going to split the hook eye and the gap or and the uh the hook point and you don't want to get too thick when you're doing this because uh it'll chew up a lot of real estate there and it's going to um shorten the amount of gap you have on your on your hook and so we don't want to lose too much hooking power by doing that just place a few wraps in this is all about to get glued in the front end, on the front end. I'm just going to trim that out. Like so you're going to have this little uh, kind of mohawk deal up there. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Just place a few wraps in. Now what I do here is I just actually take my super glue, I run it along my thread, and I just put some turns in. If you if you're Thread showing. You can use black thread. You can color the thread. It uh, it's not going to matter much here. Now I can go ahead and whip finish the fly. And what I'll usually do, he's getting them away. It's hard. It's hard to do this with the camera and stuff in my way. I'll put three or four wraps in, pull tight, and then I'll put in another, you know, three or four. Uh, just stay. You want to stay off that top of that bead. So what I'll do is if I get, kind of get close, I'll kind of pull the, up into the back. And, okay, so that's it. Then to finish this part of it, and then we're going to bounce out, and you can jump over to the second part of the video. So I'm just going to take my super glue, and I slide it along the bead until it comes into the material, uh, just to edge the material with glue. And uh, so that's uh, this is all the further we're going to go in this video. Um, so make sure you check out part two. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, share. Check out how we're going to finish this fly over on video two. And uh, happy tying, everybody. Take care.